Ring of Fire eruptions for the upcoming year. Which of the volcanoes that are on the Ring of Fire could blow in 2020? Well, we recently had the White Island volcano of the North Island of New Zealand, which is about 130 miles from the Taupo Super Volcano, which is again on the North Island of New Zealand. And that volcano was a surprise. The eruption was a surprise. It was unexpected. It was caused by a hydrothermal explosion. The water entered the crater. It was superheated, and that caused the explosion, even though they had increased earthquake swarms weeks before. They did not expect the eruption. Now, the Ring of Fire, we know, is the biggest. It's on the Pacific Plate, which is the biggest plate in the world. And it has 90% of the world's earthquakes and 75% of the world's volcanic eruptions. The Ring of Fire, the largest, most active fault in the world, stretching from New Zealand around the east coast of Asia, over from the Aleutian Islands, over to Canada, the United States West Coast, all the way down to the southern tip of South America, causing more than 90% of the world's earthquakes, 75% of the volcanic activity, and has a total of 452 volcanoes sitting on this ring of fire. Geologists say that it's impossible to predict when a volcano will, will erupt, but here are the five most dangerous on the ring of fire, on this fault line, which can pose a threat to humanity this year and beyond. This year meaning next year. The first one is the Long Valley Caldera, which is a supervolcano in California and is considered a very high threat volcano. As we know, it usually has quake swarms after big nearby earthquakes. It's had quake swarms because of recent Ridgecrest earthquake. It had a quake swarm at the last Ridgecrest earthquake 20 years ago, which was again a 7.1 magnitude. It had a quake swarm with the Denali, Alaska earthquake. And the same thing happened with Yellowstone. Yellowstone also had a quake swarm because of the Ridgecrest earthquake we had in July. It also had an earthquake swarm 20 years ago when Ridgecrest again was hit by 7.1. And Yellowstone had the quake swarm uh, with the Denali earthquake, with the Haiti earthquake, and the Chile earthquake. So these uh, supervolcanoes and the west coast, of course, feels them. Long Valley Caldera is a supervolcano. And the, it's a California volcano, and it has so much magma under it, it could support an eruption equivalent to the massive one that occurred there 767,000 years ago. That released 140 cubic miles of material into the atmosphere. And by comparison, Mount St. Helens 1980 eruption only released about 0.29 cubic miles. Now, uh, the Long Valley Caldera, as we know, also has a geothermal plant there. Now, the Long Valley Caldera is one of Earth's largest calderas, 20 miles long and 11 miles wide, and up to 3,000 feet deep. And during the last 5,000 years, an eruption has occurred somewhere along this chain of the Pacific uh, plate every 250 to 700 years. But usually, one small ones, uh, only small ones, to relieve uh, the built-up pressure of the surface, be, uh, the pressure beneath the surface. Lake Toba is one of the world's biggest supervolcanoes. It's located in Sumatra, Indonesia. It last erupted 74,000 years ago, and that gave 2,800 cubic kilometers of material into the atmosphere. After the eruption, global temperatures decreased for 10 years and it uh, covered huge areas of Indonesia and India in ash. The island in the middle of Lake Toba, Indonesia, is now rising slowly and is thought to be a sign the Earth is bulging due to magma pressure under the surface. When you have influx of magma, you have a deformation and increase in the surface elevation. And then you have New Zealand's supervolcano, Lake Taupo which is, of course, very near the White Island volcano that erupted December 9th. It first began erupting 300,000 years ago, 
and it has rarely been quiet ever since that time. Taupo is responsible for most recent supervolcanic eruption when it burst into life around 26,500 years ago, and it, it gave out 1,200 cubic kilometers of pumice and ash into the atmosphere. Since that time, there have been 28 smaller eruptions in Taupo, separated in time between 50 and 5,000 years, showing just how unpredictable this Taupo supervolcano can be. And then you have Mount Agung in Indonesia, in Bali. It's one of the most feared in the world. Mount Agung previously erupted in 1963, so it was quite recent, as you know, and the most explosive volcano event of the 20th century. When the volcano last erupted in 1963, a huge amount of ash and sulfur dioxide were pumped into the atmosphere. As we know, sulfur dioxide reacts with water vapor in the air, forming sulfuric acid droplets. Scientists feel that 10 million tons of these sulfuric acid droplets gathered in the stratosphere, which acted as a barrier, reducing the amount of ultraviolet rays that made it from the sun into the Earth's atmosphere, which had a cooling effect on the planet. Experts say temperatures dropped by up to 0 0.4 degrees Celsius. And this may not sound like much, but during the last ice age, global temperatures dropped by just 5 degrees Celsius, and that made, of course, a very big difference. And uh, it will erupt again. Mount Sakurajima of Japan, most powerful eruption in the 20th century. On January 11th, 1914, the volcano became violent and erupted. The ensuing days, large earthquakes occurred, which resulted in Sakurajima emptying the magma chamber and caused large flows of magma. While no one died because of the eruption directly, 35 people perished from the earthquakes that accompanied that volcanic eruption. The volcano is located in the island of Kyushu, southwest Japan, and is known for frequent eruptions. Kyushu is home to over 13 million people sitting on the top of the Japanese Ring of Fire where there are about 100 active volcanoes. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.